One of the big distinctions that people make that, that as writing teachers, as, as a writing specialist, we try to counter is this idea that on the one hand you have content and on the other hand you have writing and that there's a sort of a separation, right? So, you, so as if you could look at an essay and say, well, the content is really good, but the writing isn't very good. Writing is not something that happens after we know things. Writing is how we know things, and it's how we know we know things. That skepticism is something that we want to cultivate both in terms of right, developing a critical scientific literacy, where you read something and you don't say, OK, now I know what they're telling me. Um, but you say, how do they know what they know? If your professor is an expert in the field that you're trying to write about as a novice, all you're going to think about is, my professor knows all this stuff. I don't have to tell my, my professor this. They're just going to get impatient with me that I'm talking about this stuff that they know perfectly well. But the professor is in all likelihood not really reading that essay from the perspective of themselves. They're trying to figure out from that, well, how much does somebody know? And so the failure to provide context that seemed like a reasonable choice to the student looks like, oh, the student doesn't know how to create a context, doesn't know how to frame things. So I have a student right now who's working on an essay on desalination and trying to think about who his audience is. It's had a big impact on trying to figure out, you know, how he should be framing what he's talking about because for, the, for policy makers, they're probably going to care most about kind of cost and efficiency. And for the general public, it's probably more about environmental concerns. If you were addressing an audience of experts in desalination, they're going to want to know a lot more about what the current technology looks like as opposed to you know, older technologies. Um, but every kind of audience he could imagine is going to have different needs. And he couldn't really meet the needs of all of those audiences. So one of the things that, that teachers can do to help students learn about that is to really specifically provide a context for the student and, and encourage them to develop a sense of an audience, right? Um, a lot of the, the um, faculty in HumBio have assignments where students are being asked to, you know, create PSAs, right, public service announcements, where the general public has to be able to understand what's going on, or other people have assignments that, um, that are more sort of po about addressing policymakers. As a teacher, you can provide just opportunities for people to reflect and discuss and say, okay, how would this whole experience of writing has been different if you had been addressing a different audience? If they're writing an essay about X, the default position is to always think, I'm learning about X, not about how to write something like this that I can then take that skill and transfer it to someplace else. But it really helps them, and it helps them sort of see what they already know if the language that people use to talk about it and the kinds of instructional support they get has a little bit, has some continuity. And I think having this sort of common language that's established by these capacities just is so enabling, right, for for everybody, you know, involved in the process, students, faculty, you know, everybody.